As always, please pause the video and reread the question before moving on. In order to solve part A of the question, we're going to draw a free body diagram of blocks A and C combined, and also a free body diagram of block B. Let's start with blocks A and C combined. We have four forces acting on blocks A and C. We have the tension pulling those blocks to the right, the static frictional force pointing in the opposite direction, the table pushing up on the blocks, which is known as the normal force, and then the force of gravity acting on both the blocks. We'll notice that we indicated AC for the force of gravity because that force will be a combination of the force of gravity on A and also the force of gravity on C. So more about that in just a moment. Let's draw the free body diagram for object B as well. There are only two forces acting on object B, the force of gravity pulling object B down and then the tension holding block B upward. Both blocks in part A are at rest, so we can apply Newton's second law, which of course is the net force equals the product of mass and acceleration, but because the blocks are both at rest, the acceleration is going to be zero. So the right side of this equation will be set equal to zero in this case. And this is a condition known as equilibrium. Let's apply this formula first to block B. And since the only forces on block B are acting in the y direction, we can include a y subscript for the net force. The net force would be the positive directed tension because it's upward and then the downward or negatively directed force of gravity acting on block B. Now the force of gravity acting on block B was given to us as 22 newtons so we can go ahead and fill that in. And then of course it's pretty trivial to find the tension which is also 22 newtons so once we have that tension you want to circle it and keep it on the side. We're going to use it in just a moment when we apply Newton's second law to blocks A and C so let's do that right now. Once again, the sum of the forces is equal to zero because blocks A and C are at rest. We're going to split this equation up into both the x and the y direction. In the x direction, we have the positive pointing tension force, positive because it's pointing to the right, and then the static frictional force, which is negative because it's pointing to the left. Let's fill those in here. We recall that the static frictional force is the product of the coefficient of static friction and the normal force, so we can replace F sub S with that expression. We know the tension because we solved for that earlier and we were given in the question the coefficient of static friction. It is the normal force that we do not yet know. So let's turn to the y direction to find that. In the y direction there are two forces acting, the upward and positive normal force, the downward and thus negative force of gravity. Note again that the force of gravity is composed of the force of gravity on both block A and C. We're essentially treating this as a single object. And what that means is that the force of gravity is going to be a combination of the 44 newtons contributed by block A, and then the unknown number of newtons contributed by block C. So we can write this in the following manner, the force of gravity. Again, we have the 44 newtons contributed by block A, and then the unknown number of newtons contributed by block C, which we've indicated as F sub G C. We can actually add this term over to the other side and solve for the normal force. And then what we'll do is we'll take this expression for the normal force, and we'll plug it in to the equation we had derived for the x direction. Why don't we go ahead and plug in for the tension as well as the coefficient of static friction and that's going to allow us to solve for the force of gravity acting on object C, which is essentially the weight of object C. Why don't we go ahead and subtract 22 from both sides of this equation. We'll carry our work up here to make some room. Divide both sides by negative 0.2 and then subtract both sides by 44. And we obtain 66 newtons for the force of gravity acting on object C, which again is the same thing as the weight of object C. So that's the answer to part A. Now in part B, block C is lifted off, so that's going to change this picture. We can basically get rid of block C in the picture. And as a result, the block A is going to accelerate. And in fact, block B also accelerates. So let's put the free body diagram back up for block B. So here we have the free body diagram for block B. For the other free body diagram, we have to take off the portion that says C right here. Remember that we have removed block C, so there's no longer a gravitational force acting on block C because it's not even present in the free body diagram, so we can make an adjustment there. Let's apply Newton's second law to object B. Because the acceleration is not zero, we have to include it in the formula, so we have mass times A instead of zero. Let's fill in the two forces. Notice FG is negative because it's pointing down. In fact, the block B is accelerating downward, so the acceleration also is going to be negative. It's recommended then we put a negative sign in front of this because the acceleration is indeed negative. Let's fill in our known values. We were not directly told the mass, but we can easily find the mass by recalling the following. 
We know the force of gravity is equal to the product of mass and the gravitational constant. So if we solve this equation for mass, we could certainly calculate it by just pl plugging in the 22 newtons and 9.81. And that simplifies to 2.24 kilograms. So we can plug that in as the mass of object B. And we can solve this equation for tension by adding 22 to the other side. Let's hold on to this result for tension and move over to the other free body diagram. Applying Newton's second law in the x direction, we have two forces, tension and the, oh, this time it's the kinetic frictional force because we actually are sliding across the surface. So we have to replace that with F sub k. F sub k is the product of the coefficient of kinetic friction and normal force. So let's replace this term right here. Notice that the normal force will be equal to the force of gravity on block A. There is no acceleration in the y direction, so these two forces balance each other out, or in other words, their magnitudes are equal. So we can replace the normal force with Fg for block A. But of course, Fg for block A is the same thing as Mg. Let's substitute in known values. Let's also remember that the tension was given by this expression, so we can replace tension in our current equation with the expression negative 2.24a plus 22. So doing that and filling in known values, we have following. Notice here the mass of object A once again was replaced with the expression mass is equal to the force of gravity divided by the gravitational constant. We now have a relatively easy equation and we can solve for A. And when we do that, we get 2.3 meters per second squared. So that would be the acceleration of block A and also of block B. They accelerate together because they're connected by a continuous rope. So both objects technically are accelerating at a rate of 2.3 meters per second squared. If you have any questions about that last minute algebra there, let me know and I'd be happy to clarify.